So, let's catch up. For the record, Taichi's safely back in Okinawa by now. Saw so him off at the airport personally. <laughs> Bought him enough tchotchkes to fill a duffel bag. That cabaret fight shouldn't sour his memories of the city. Good. Taichi's lucky to have you looking out. Thank you, Date-san. Hang on. Too early to start thanking me. We need to talk about what's next. Hmm? Come on. Taichi's far from the only one you've shut out. You've been dead to the world how many years? That's what I'm supposed to be. Dead men don't keep in touch. The Daidoji faction made that clear. They only back me as long as I stick to the shadows. Then what happens now? There's video evidence of Kazuma Kiryu still walking the earth. Force majeure, as the French call it, out of our hands. Daidoji say anything about that yet? No, nothing so far. As I thought, they're not omnipotent anyway. Not half as much as they were. What are you trying to say, Date-san? Only that, the way I see it, the Daidoji faction has reason to loosen your leash a bit. If circumstances align for a near miss or two with old friends, they'll likely be too occupied to care. Maybe. But you're forgetting. I keep my promises, whether I'm forced to or not. Oh, I'm well aware. But seeing Taichi didn't make you break your word, did it? You keep your distance, they never know you're there. I'm sure the Daidoji won't raise a stink. And if I were one of them, I'd be none too happy. Bloody hell. Does that backbone of yours ever bend? How about this, then? You know what Kamarucho is like these days. With the Tojo and Omi put to pasture, the Yakuza are just a memory. Petty criminals filled that gap. Better or worse, they're too insignificant to pin down. Cops have nothing to hold on to with them. I get it. So what? Some Kamarocho folk think it's worse than ever. Reminds me, Akiyama's gone quiet lately. Hmm? Akiyama? Can't find him? Date-san, when was the last time you two spoke? Just after the dissolution, I suppose. He caught when Kazuma Kiryu might have had a hand in it. Akiyama went hunting for anything he could find, but came back with nothing more than rumors. He rang me up late one night during his investigations. I've tried calling him since, but there's never an answer. He might have finally left town. What? So he just disappeared? Do you even know if he's alive? The thought occurred to me, so I've kept a watch going. If he shows up, the police will know. Are you worried? He's just one of plenty you've turned your back to, after all. Nakiyama will be just fine. He's gone up against worse than this before. <sighs> Honestly, you're probably right. Leave him aside for now, then. We both know, regardless of all that, Akiyama's not your only concern. Tell me what you want from me, Date-san. I thought I'd been clear. This whole bucket kick list of yours is an opportunity. You and the Daidoji can stay honest with each other while we get you some closure on things. Leave everything to me. Akiyama, too. I'll dig him up somehow. Date-san. Who else out there do you need to see? Think. Kamarocho's got a lot of faces. You spent practically half your life on those streets. The people who meant the most to me are dead. Kazuma-san, Yumi, even Nishiki. I still visit their graves. In fact, I was just there recently. To say I'll be with them soon. God's sake. All right, let's focus on the ones who are still above ground. Because, like it or not, that includes you, for now. So who else, hmm? How's that daughter of yours doing? Huh? Saya? Oh, she's fine. She's married now. Three kids. She's... 
Doesn't that mean you're a grandfather? <laughs> I don't believe it. You never thought to tell me? Because that's not what we're here to talk about, damn it. All right. Quit trying to distract me, would you? Take your time if you have to. Think of Kamarocho, okay? I know there's someone there. Hmm. Kamarocho locals that I knew. Well, I guess there's Kazuki and Yuya. There you go. That's a great call, in fact. Kazuki and Yuya. They're doing well, last I checked. As you know, Stardust fell to the Korean Mafia some time back, but it's up and running again. <laughs> Is that so? Yep, now that we have that settled, I only have to come up with a plan. Some way the Daidoji faction will write off as a coincidence, just in case. Like with Taichi, we need the perfect setting. Give me a bit of time. Whatever you say. I'll go along with this because I trust you. Thanks, Date-san. Stop it. This is something I want to do. There's no need for one word of appreciation. You must be tired. Hey, Joe. Ah, hey there, Kiryu-san. Someone's been knocking him back. You know, I still haven't had a drink with you yet. Mind if I sit here? Of course not. Be my guest. <laughs> Some one-on-one -on -one time with Kiryu-san, huh? Kind of making me a little nervous here. Then I guess you've already got a good buzz going. Been a while since you stepped down as a leader of the Liumang, hasn't it? Yep. Now I'm just a regular old civilian. Trying to be one, at least. Right. I imagine other people might not see it that way. It's been a solid 15 years since you quit the business, right? But people still call you Kiryu, son. The fourth chairman and the dragon of Dojima. Yeah. There's no running from your past. Guess we're both struggling on that front. <laughs> but at least I've got it a bit easier than you. My name's only good around here in Ijincho. Do you ever regret giving it all up? Your father passed you the mantle, right? Well. Liumang was tearing itself apart from the inside out back then. Thanks to Ryo Ayuki and the Omi Alliance. A good lot of them stabbed me in the back. Some of the old heads included. We had no choice but to rebuild from the ground up. Obviously somebody has to take responsibility for all that. And well, who else better than the guy up top? Since Komijo was literally going up in smoke too, Eijin Cho's entire gray zone was in danger. Having Sun He take the wheel was the best choice, so no. I don't regret my decision. I see. By bringing the Liu Mang and Komi Jewel together, Sun He managed to save a lot of lives. That had to be a ton of hard work. I can't possibly thank her enough for all she's done. I'm impressed you're so honest about it. I gotta say, it hits different when you're the one dishing out praise, Kiryu-san. Kasuga-kun's got a way with words, but you're not too bad yourself. Thanks. Kiryu-san, 
You're a dead man walking, aren't you? So you can't pay your family or friends a little visit? That's right. Are you sure you should be talking to me then? The Daidoji probably think that this will all work out in their favor. So they'll turn a blind eye. All right then. You think it'd be cool if you came over to my place? Your place? I own a Chinese restaurant, see? <laughs> An old little hole in the wall, but it's mine. Sometimes I cook the food myself. <laughs> Scratch that. Not sometimes. I cook pretty much every day. From the top of the Liumang to the head of the kitchen. <laughs> I've always loved cooking. You catch me in the kitchen even during my Liumang days. A lot of my guys like to eat whatever I whipped up to. You ever consider that it was hard for them to tell the boss his food sucks? <laughs> oh, so that's how you want to play. Guess now I've just got to invite you to my restaurant then. Sure, I'll go. It's all gonna be on the house, right? Yeah, of course. But if you find the food tasty, then I'll take cash over any compliments to the chef. That's some confidence you've got there. I look forward to it. How about another round? Fine by me. But you should take it easy. Wouldn't want you to keel over before you get a taste of my cooking. Fine. Whatever you say. Barkeep. Hard to believe you're a sick man. Barkeep, hit me with another two. That's the spirit. Excuse me. Hey, what's with the face? Huh? Oh, hey, Kiryu-san. Something's been bugging me, actually. That right? Yep. Mind hearing me out? Can't say it'll be much fun, though. I'm all ears. I was checking out this food blog earlier. They review bars and other joints here in Ijincho. Of course, that means they hit up my place, too. Sounds like they rubbed you the wrong way. Well, yeah. They wrote a bunch of crap about how the food sucks, how the employees are rude, how the place is a stinking mess. And it's not a one-time deal, either. They've been writing about my place for days. You're saying these are fake reviews? What else could they be? I take pride in my cooking. Sure, my place might be a little old, but I keep it spotless. Man, even thinking about all this just pisses me off. Can't be fun to deal with. Yeah, trust me, it's not. I'm still trying to figure out how to handle this. Should I leave it alone, or do I do something about it? <laughs> Maybe we should have talked about something else. Why don't you just leave it alone? Could just be a fad. Yeah, I know. Better to ignore some random blogger's bullshit. Like, I get that. 100%. But did he really have to go write all that? How the hell is my twice-cooked fork inedible? All right, so you really don't want to leave this alone. <sighs> yeah. I get everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But this just doesn't sit well with me. Has that blog started to affect your business? Nah. Sales is more or less the same as ever, as far as I know. My place gets lots of regulars. I think the customers who do follow blogs are usually the first-timers. Makes sense. And all that's left to consider is how you feel about this whole situation. Yep. Guess so. And I think I've got an idea who that blogger is. Oh, yeah? Right before that blog posted, I got into a nasty little spat with a customer. Never seen him before in my life. How'd that happen? Well, considering my previous occupation, I get a lot of customers with some real heavy baggage. So I don't let people take any pictures or videos once they're inside. Even got signs saying so. But 
that guy didn't give a shit. And there's no way you didn't call him out. Damn right. I went up to him and I told him, please refrain from filming inside the restaurant. Honestly, I wouldn't have cared if it was just him there, but the place was pretty packed at the time. And that just got him all riled up. How dare you speak to a customer like that? And things just went downhill from there. He flung his chopsticks at his bowl and stormed out, screeching, See if I ever come back here again! The day after that, someone posted on their blog talking shit about my restaurant. I figure it's probably the same guy. Yeah, seems likely to me. Hard to think those events aren't related. Right. <laughs> I knew you'd understand, Kiryu-san. So, what's your plan? If that customer is the same person behind the blog post, are you going to confront him? I'm not gonna go that far. I'm just a regular civilian now. A humble chef. Considering how proud you are of your cooking, you're taking this pretty well. Yep, I think so too. It's like... Once I get heated, it's hard for me to hold back. <laughs> this guy. What happened to being a regular civilian? Guess I'll have myself another drink. Alcohol's not a bad distraction. I'm with you there. Sorry for making you sit through that nonsense. Just glad you're feeling better. Curious, son. What's up, Xiao? More bad press for your restaurant? Eh, <sighs> not this time. Got a message from the Liu Mong boys. Said they wanted to tell me something. But didn't you leave the Liu Mong? Yeah, I did. But they still try to contact me. Mind if I complain for a bit? So, what do they want? You remember the blog I mentioned last time? The one talking trash about my place. Right. Might be the same guy that gave you trouble. Yep. Those Liu Mong boys are using whatever means possible to hunt him down. They're hell-bent on catching him. Saying stuff like, he can't go around starting shit and running away like that. And if they do find him, things might get real messy. But you're not the one ordering them around, right? No, of course not. Which means these young guns are causing a racket because someone's giving their old boss a hard time. Yep. Honor's just as big a deal as life and death down in the underworld. Not that you need me to tell you that. Let's just wait and see what happens next. You don't need to help that blogger out. So, I should play ignorance? and wait for the boys to get their revenge. Doesn't sound great when you put it that way. Guess that's not an option. Not in this kind of situation. So, how many of these guys are we talking about? A lot of them, but probably no more than 50. That's still no joke. But there's only four guys at the core of the whole shebang. They used to hang around me back when I was the leader, called themselves the Four Beasts. Sort of like your personal guard. <laughs> they were kind of adorable in a way, but feisty. Got a tendency to take things a little too far. They're the ones who were really pissed off with this blogger, so I gotta tighten the leash. Must be tough on you. They're not gonna leave you alone so long as they keep you on that pedestal. <laughs> yeah, like you're one to talk, Kiryu san. What's going on with me can't even compare to what the Dragon of Dojima goes through. But I guess the two of us are in the same boat. I mean, who else can relate to this kind of stuff? Well, I can lend you an ear if you want to talk about it. Thanks for that. But like I said, same boat. If there's anything on your mind, you can lay it on me too. That's so. Great. Looks like I found myself a drinking buddy. 
But seriously, Kiri-san, you always look like you're trying to shoulder everything yourself. Hell, you even were quick to accept the fact that your time's been cut short. Not really. I've spent plenty of time thinking about it. You don't gotta lie down and take it. You could still try to fight back, you know. Survive. Looks to me like you're putting on an act. Because you're supposed to be a legend. Where is this coming from? Just something that's been on my mind. We've gotten pretty chummy, haven't we? Close enough for me to air out all my stupid complaints to you. Figured I could come out and say it by now. Or, um, did I cross the line there? You're fine. I'll keep that in mind. After all, it's good advice from a good drinking buddy. Awesome. Made all these drinks worth it. <laughs> Man, you are one legendary pain in the ass. <sighs> Didn't think the drinks would hit so hard today. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks a lot. I hear that place has good soft serve. Says they use almond jelly. That does sound good. Soft serve? I have to admit, that brings up bitter memories. But ice cream's supposed to be sweet. <laughs> Nanchan, what do you mean? Back at my old job, a boss once sent me out for soft serve. I wanted to get back quick to impress him, so I ran. Then I stumbled, and it dropped. Oh no! You had to go all the way back and get more? No way. I didn't have that kind of time. Plus, I'd only spilt the ice cream. No. Don't tell me. No, oh, I grabbed it and put it back in the cone. Of course, I didn't see how much dirt and crap got mixed in until I handed it to my boss. Oh, he must have been pissed. That's a... Hello? It's Dante Kiryu. Could you come to the Harbor Light if you're free? We'll make for Camarocho from there. Be sure that you're ready. Understood. I'll come soon. Oh, I hear that place has zips, but I'm nonchalant. Back one to get back, then I stumbled. Oh, um, no way. No. Oh, of course, I didn't see how much dirt and crap got mixed in until I handed it to my boss. Oh, he must have been pissed. <laughs> Back, then I stumbled. Oh, no. 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 Of course. Oh, I told him, promise next time I'll take a less dirty street. That was the best you could offer. Shameful may it be, all this talk is making me want some soft serve. 
Hey, Namuka. Run and get some for us? Uh, have you been listening? Let's do this! Let's do it. Okay. Follow my lead. Time to take out the crash. Good, you have everything. Yeah, straight over to Stardust. Kazuki and Yuya are both working there today. Hope you're prepared for this. We're giving that bucket list some weight to it. And there it is. Kamarocho's prevailing host club, Stardust. Prevailing, huh? <laughs> They've come a long way, I suppose. Obviously, the Jing'an occupation brought some drastic changes a while back. Now it's returned to its more traditional route, so to speak. That Kazuki boy's always had a vision. You're not kidding. That's not just traditional. It's downright nostalgic. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Ah, uh, you, yeah. Huh. Honestly, things never change. Right in the middle of the street. Like I give a shit who you're with. The Tojo clan couldn't even get protection money from us. Get out of here. Don't come back again. You're freaking dead! We're gonna ruin this joint! <laughs> but the best you've got for me? Real Kamurocho natives sneeze better threats. Let me teach you. Never screw with the big boys. Kazuki-san, <laughs> I'll cover the outside. 
You worry about business on the inside. You know how boring it is without you in there? Come. There's always more to do. On it. Wow. So chic. Ah, Stardust! I want to marry this place! Seems as popular as ever, huh? I suppose so. I appreciate you helping me get one last look at them. Let's slow down. Hey, that was the owner just now, right? Hell of a show. Hmm? Oh, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> Those crooks were looking for protection money? Amazing how you all beat them back. And by the looks of it, business is booming for you boys. Suppose so. We're uh, pretty old-fashioned as host clubs go. Our competitors like to say we're behind the times. But Kazuki-san's a great boss, and with him in charge again, we're all eager to work here. The fact that he still pulls in such young fans is especially motivating. Us <laughs> young bloods have to keep up. <laughs> I'm glad to see people still admire Kazuki and Yuya. That'll never change. They've always been a different breed. And Kamurocho fixtures for decades. Most people have forgotten by now, but the Jingon Mafia took this place some time ago. They had money, weapons, people. Things got really rough for a bit. Hmm. The Jingon used Stardust to launch their Kamarocho expansion. It was a smart play. Oh, mister, you know your stuff. Have you heard the entire history behind it all? Hmm? As to why the Jingon was targeting Kamarocho in the first place, I mean. You see, the Korean Mafia was beaten badly by Tojo Clan Yakuza back in the 80s. Meaning, no offense, you two look like you might have been around back then. Do you know about the Dragon of Dojima? <laughs> yep, I've heard the name before, at least. <laughs> I figured. No one who knows anything about Kamurocho wouldn't know Kazuma Kiryu, after all. Yeah, Kiryu-san was a legend who kicked the Jingon out almost single-handedly. Kazuki-san and Yuya, though, had the misfortune of being his friends. So, when the Jingon Mafia finally came back, they went straight for Stardust and Retribution. You could say Kazuki-san was just another victim of Kazuma Kiryu's legacy of violence. Huh. Not exactly sure that's accurate. You know? Don't you think? I gotta say, this city's story has always been about honest people paying for the underground sins. At least the Jingon are dead and buried now, anyway. Kiryu-san, too. So I've been told. And with all of them gone, it fell to Kazuki-san to rebuild on his own. It kills me to think of him having to bow his head to every moneylender in town. If those criminals could hear me from hell, especially Kiryu, I'd have some words for him. I see. Fair enough. I'd say you've got a point. Hey! Thanks for your time. Hope we didn't bother you. No, of course not. No bother at all, sirs. Hey, where are you going? This isn't what we came for. Kazuki and Yuya are coming to Serena in a little while. Don't tell me you invited them there. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to reveal yourself. It's just a chance to hear them, see how they're really doing. No. I saw for myself they're doing well. And I've heard enough. Oh, come on, don't say that. I promise you, whatever that toddler of a host said, Kazuki and Yuya don't agree with him. I've never heard them utter one word of resentment. Even still, I... Honestly, just come upstairs. What's a Kamarocho trip without revisiting this place anyway? Think of it as part of the tour. Ah, there you are. Good to see you, Kazuki. Yuya. Likewise. Thank you for inviting us. Not every day the legendary detective of Kamurocho asks you out for drinks. Hmm. Is that the kind of barefaced flattery Stardust customers get treated to, Yuya? That wasn't flattery. Everyone knows I speak my mind, pure and simple. All right, all right. Hey, by the way, 
This place is empty. You didn't, like, reserve the whole bar for us, did you? Not at all. This is the slow time of night. Always clears out around now. Come on, Yuya. Don't be presumptuous. Okay, Gazuki-san, but I bet you were thinking the same thing. Here it is, trying to clear your name by muddying mine. I apologize for that, Date-san. Oh, get this, Date-san. Know what happened earlier? Some small-timers actually came around for protection fees. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Happened to be down the street during the confrontation. Well thought. Uh, don't tell anyone I said that. Technically, I probably should have arrested you. How are you always so up to date? Rolling on Stardust's front door just now? Gotta say, it actually brought back memories. Yeah? Of what sort? Huh. <laughs> Do you have to ask? I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. Yep. Dead to rights, yeah? <laughs> Come on, don't keep me in suspense. Back in the day, Yuya would hurl Yakuza hither and yon from our doorway. We'll say for one. Kiryu-san, naturally. I get it now. Of course he'd come to mind. Hard to believe that was almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, crazy. I can count on one hand the fights I've lost in my life, but I've never felt strength like his before or since. That first night, he looked just like any other mid rank soldier come to squeeze us. Huh. Little did you know you were picking a fight with the dragon of Dojima. Time never slows down, huh? Soon, Kiryu san will have been dead for as long as I knew him when he was alive. Kiryu keeps a bottle on reserve just in case he ever shows up again someday. <laughs> One of our most expensive bottles, in fact. <laughs> Doesn't exactly help our bottom line. Well, Yuya's not alone there. Sometimes I'm stunned he's been gone so long. But everyone in this district who ever met the guy feels that, now and again. Maybe. Still, he had a way of bringing trouble wherever he went, wouldn't you say? Stardust must have surely suffered over the years because of him, no? Your doorman has something of a grudge against him, in fact. Can't in good faith deny that, I guess. Talk about someone the world just has it out for. There were times he'd waltz in, and you'd know a storm was coming. I don't know. Do you think Kiryu-san would forgive me if you heard me say that? It's fine. If you're still carrying this with you, might as well let it out. Okay. The thing is, no one ever took the brunt of it worse than Kiryu-san himself. When that man clenched his jaw and furrowed his eyes, all your doubts would disappear. I'll never forget the first time we met. He was ready to overthrow the Tojo clan, all on his own. But then, he found a little girl worth 10 billion yen, and decided to protect her like she was his own blood. After that, Kiryu-san became an icon to this city. Anyone who knew him knew the courage he could instill. Every twist and turn, all our troubles and hard times felt bearable then. Yeah, that's what Kiryu-san was to us. That's why it's so hard to believe he's gone for good. Hey, Date-san. Hmm? Why tonight? Why invite both of us here all of a sudden? Did anything happen recently? What do you mean? Hmm, I wonder. News of Kiryu-san, perhaps? A sighting, a rumor, a word? Some sliver of evidence somehow suggesting that his death was... A faint? Uh, don't do this to yourselves. I'm sorry, but I called you because I felt like seeing some old friends. I see. And that's all it is? Ah, come on. Can you blame us for hoping for something more? <sighs> <sighs> you too. Kasuki-san likes to say that Kiryu-san deserves to have us honor his legacy. That's why Stardust was worth all the scraping and clawing it took to get it back. Yeah, that must have been difficult. But from the looks of it, Stardust has truly recovered. Kamarocho itself, even. Like the city's healing from Tenkaichi Street out. 
the first time in a long time. I think I'd be proud for him to visit us again. I'd like him to know that we're still standing. I suppose I understand Yuya and his bottle now. It's all right. I have a feeling he's damn proud of the both of you. Believe me, there's not a doubt in my mind. I should apologize for dragging you all the way up there. I know you're busy. You don't have to do that. I appreciate all the work it took. Kazuki and Yuya, well, feel free to tell me I was right. Those two have always looked up to you. Maybe Kamarocho can become a little bit better if its people don't forget the man who fought for it. How was it hearing all that? It was good. I felt happy. Like listening in on your own funeral, though. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable, I suppose. Although, what better way to find perspective on the life you've led than that? No one expects they're the poor bastard everyone will say good riddance over. Except maybe you. You think you only ever put people in danger. I'm gonna prove to you you're wrong. I'm working on another clandestine reunion. Stay in touch until then. Thanks for the drink. See you again soon. <sighs> Good night, Kiryu. Do your best to hold on to what they said. Dante here, Kiryu. If you have time, come to Harbor Light, will you? Sure, understood. I'll be there. Not a loser! It's my turn. All right, let's finish it. Together, we only need one Naturally. shot. Naturally. Bring it on! Follow my lead. Now we're done. Yeah. Ah. I'm back. Learning more every day. Hell yeah. There's more where this came from. Mm -hmm. Psycho, mind if I ask you something? Oh, uh, really? <laughs> sure. Go right ahead. Is. Something bothering you, Sunhee? Do I have a ramen lover's face? Uh, ramen lover? 
I've noticed lately whenever I go to the salon, whoever's there hands me guidebooks for local ramen spots. Um... You know, when they give you something to read while you wait? The other girls get fashion magazines, but me, ramen. Hmm. When you first met me, Psycho, did you think, this woman must be crazy for ramen? No, honestly, I, I just thought your sunglasses were kind of obnoxious. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> is it? I've just been feeling really self-conscious about this lately. Are you sure it's not a coincidence? Am I just paranoid, you think? I don't know. I should go back to the salon. See if it happens again. I'll report back to you. Um, yeah. Good idea. Is that really a good enough reason to book a salon appointment? Bring it on. It's my turn. What are you doing then? I won't hold back. Now we're talking. What a nice boy. I'll follow your lead. I'm over here. Let's do it. I don't know. Come on, though. Did you really think? For mercy now. You want some? I won't hold back. Big target is there, fine. I'll I assume you're ready to go. Hmm. I'm prepared. Good. As it happens, there are a few familiar faces visiting Eugene's show at the moment. I suppose that's pure coincidence. Would you believe I didn't invite them? The Seiryu clan did. To prepare for the dissolution, Ebina has been in touch with regional families across Japan. These two have come to answer his call, all the way from Hiroshima. Onomichi, actually. Onomichi? A Yome Alliance subsidiary, the Hirose families Tagashira and Matsunaga, here in Ijinsho right now. Huh. Tagashira. Matsunaga. They're here to investigate the Seiryu for themselves. Unfortunately, Captain Nagumo couldn't make it. Investigate, you said? If Ebina's dissolution succeeds, every Yakuza group in the country will feel its effects. No matter where they're located, no family can ignore Yokohama right now. So? Tagashira and Matsunaga are here to survey and report back on behalf of the Yome. Wow. They're representing all of Hiroshima, that means. The Hirose family might have started small, but they've been making a name for themselves. Many would credit their old patriarch Toru for that. He died doing wet work for the former Yome chairman. He died loyally. As such, he left behind a family worthy of respect. They report directly to the chairman now. Which means your boys are officers of the main family. They're trusted with a lot these days. I see. How about that? What's wrong? You've got that look on your face. You don't want to see him? It isn't that. Not exactly. I'm worried how they'd react if they knew I survived. 
Why? Think they'd take it poorly? The Hirose family was small, but they were as tight-knit as any family I've seen. As soon as I entered their lives, that all changed. And Hirose's death was a direct consequence of that. If I'd never set foot in Hiroshima, Tagashira and the others might still have their boss. I never apologized to them. In fact, I took the easy way out by going into hiding. How could I ever show my face to them again? Who said you'd show your face? Hang back, just like with Kazuki and everyone. Hear Tagashira himself say what they think of you. <laughs> Honestly, you should get how this works by now. Maybe so. Remember, Hiroshima is part of your legacy. The last heroic stand of Kazuma Kiryu. Tagashira and Matsunaga saw history made there. Don't you find the prospect intriguing? Hearing their thoughts on your final moments? <sighs> That's a sad way of putting it. You make it sound like I'm some voyeur. <laughs> Either way, the timing of their Ijin show trip is perfect for us. Don't question serendipity. They're drinking at a bar nearby right now. Let's not miss them. See them there, Kiryu? Those are your boys. Yeah. It's like they haven't changed at all. Same as when we met. Well, not completely. It's strange seeing them with subordinates of their own. For shit's sake. How long are they gonna make us wait? Came all the way to Yokohama for this? Hmm. <laughs> They're treating us like dirt here. Supposed to be honored guests. Savory you hospitality, my ass. We're Hiroshima dignitaries for crying out loud. Hmm. Doesn't seem like they're in a good mood. Are they that pissed off that a girl hasn't sat down with them yet? Really? Not sure. Hard to tell from just eavesdropping. <laughs> right then. I'll take it from here. Let's get a better look at these big shots, huh? Date-san, what are you doing? The Daidoji faction doesn't own me. In case you've forgotten. I can say hi to whomever I want. Dante-san! Damn it. Hmm? And just, who might you be? Tokyo Metropolitan, Detective Makoto Dante. Are you too familiar with me? <laughs> we look like guys with lots of cop friends. Go polish your badge. Should warn you, these two pups ain't housebroken. Any closer and they might bite you. Hey, calm down. There's no need to be a prick. The hell? You got your head screwed on wrong, or you just want to die, old man? Whoa, hold a second to Gashua. Tokyo detective named Date, he said. Kiri Anaki had a buddy called that, right? Huh? Ah, now that you mention it, it... Wait, so then what's he doing here? You're Hirose, Tagashira and Matsunaga, correct? Be happy to buy you boys a drink. I'm off duty, not looking to bust anyone. Just want some company. Same as you two, from what I can see. Yeah, well, the girls here ain't exactly swarming us. Uh, you sure about this, Aniki? I mean, knocking them back with the fuzz? You heard him. Man's off duty right now. We're just three assholes, no titles and nothing. This way, we never drank with the enemy team. Yeah, that's what you're saying, right, Dante-san? Yep. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, all right then. Matsunaga Aniki says he can buy his drinks. He can buy his drinks. Good, I appreciate it. Let me ask you both something. You sounded pretty pissed off before. Why was that? It's never just because of the girls. Nah, it wasn't about that. Yokohama's a long trip for us, and we're being treated like hicks. There's ex-Yakuza all over town, and they're eyeing us like we got a disease. The Seiryu clan sure as hell not offering to cut us into anything worth a damn. Why even invite us? Too worried about their own profits taking a hit. 
I mean, look around. They're scoping us out from every angle. They all stare, but nobody says as much as hello. Wait a second. You mean everyone here is Yakuza? Eugene shows got ex Tojo and Omi guys crawling around like roaches right now. <laughs> We're doing fine for ourselves out west in Hiroshima. Only came by to be courteous. What he means is the Yomei Alliance asked us directly, and we followed orders. I wonder, is your table so barren because they're trying to ice you out? Maybe women around here are smart enough not to drink with a couple of small town bumfucks. Say that again, asshole! Whatever it is you're looking for here, you're not gonna find it. So screw off. Oh, whoa, 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 big talk from men that walk got dissolved, huh? You bastards really want to throw down, huh? Go ahead! Nobody cut our family's balls off! Whoa, Hiroshima thugs are all talk, right? I'm sure we can take them. Catch the next train home, fuckers! Or we'll punch your ticket for you! Huh? Who the hell's that? Hey, you need to stay back, dammit. Kiryu! Huh? Kiryu, uh, Kiryuin. Kiryuin? Date-san, you know this guy? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, maybe. The Roshman dignitaries should know better than to disrespect the cities they visit. This is how blood starts running. What's your deal? We'll handle this from here. Right, Date-senpai? Yes, of course. This is my junior partner, Kiryuin. Okay, everything's settled? You two leave while you can. <laughs> You're out of your mind. This ain't no one's fight but ours. Damn it, stop. You're in enough crap already. Stay back. Bring it on. Let's do it. Bring it on. Let's do it. Try to block this. You asked for it. This will be Who wants to go? <sighs> Follow my lead. Time to put you down. Yeah. Too easy. You, you picked the wrong opponent. 